talking to my mom about, uh, what, an hour and a half away from New York City, Allentown, Pennsylvania. She said, it's not a pretty snow, Alex. It's not a nice snow to look at. So it's really slushy. It's wet. It's beginning to get dirty as people have driven through it. What is left, that is. Now, some areas, though, in interior sections of especially New York and New England, that's where we saw some higher amounts. Plainfield Mass, 8 inches. Mount Pocono, 7.5. That was in Pennsylvania. West Greenwich, New, uh, Rhode Island, 7 inches of snow. But again, you may not be looking at seven inches stacked up with temperatures staying around the freezing mark in some of these New England spots. That's allowing some of that to melt. Now, Providence, you're seeing the rain mixing with snow at this point. So again, eating away at any snow that you had. Parts of Connecticut still getting in on the snow. Boston's at 36. Again, rain and snow mixing. So again, that's going to bring down the snow that you're actually looking at out the window. New York City is at 36. We've got a little sunshine peeking out. So again, not too much snow uh, for the rest of your day. A lot of that is going going to be gone by the time you get out there for the late day commute. As we move through the afternoon and evening, you can see that rain snow mix remains across coastal sections of New England. So that would be southern Connecticut, southern Rhode Island, parts of eastern Massachusetts. Out on the Cape, it is just a cool rain. Portland, you'll continue to see the snow. But again, temperatures holding around 32 there, 33 degrees. Same for Albany, right around the freezing mark. That's going to mean that the roads will generally stay in good condition. We keep our winter storm warnings going from the Syracuse to Albany stretch, Bingham to Albany, that I-88 corridor, and then Concord, Portland, up towards Conway, other areas under the winter weather advisory through this evening. And through tomorrow morning, not looking at huge accumulations. Again, I think limited three to five inch totals possible up here into Maine. Maybe an isolated spot seeing more than five inches, Mike, but mostly one to three inch totals will be the name of the game moving forward through Tuesday. All right, so and we've got Winter Storm Quest bringing the wintry weather again to portions of the Great Lakes and into the Northeast. For many, it'll be the same areas that are winters, but there will be some spots that have been waiting for that good snow that will get in on some good snow. Chicago, looking at you. Here's that storm system that Dr. Nab pointed out was strengthening over the southern U.S. Of course, that's responsible for our severe risk as well. But as that moisture surges northward, it is going to meet up with that colder air in place that's rushing south on the backside of this system. And so there will be a decent stretch of winter weather, both snow and wintry mix freezing rain potential out of this. Uh, snow totals could be on the order of five to eight inches across northern Illinois and around the Great Lakes. That includes areas around and north of Detroit. As we move into the northeast, that's where we could see some eight to 12 plus inch totals. Once again, it looks to be the interior spots though. So interior sections of New York and uh, Massachusetts, Southern Vermont and New Hampshire, as well as Northern sections of Connecticut. So very similar to the footprint of snow out of winter storm Piper that we're currently dealing with. I think that's where we're going to see some more of the significant amounts out of quest Thursday. You've got the snow across Colorado, Western sections of Kansas, Southwest Nebraska. Now on Thursday night, that snow begins to edge closer to Chicago. We've got a rain snow mix just to the south. Before Chicago, I think we change over to snow during the day on Friday. In addition to snow, it's a windy one, so a very wintry-like day with temperatures in the mid-30s. I think we will see some very heavy snowfall rates that will be able to overcome those marginal temperatures and leave us with some good snow on the ground. Heaviest snow across the Great Lakes with snow showers increasing on the north side of the system. That's what you need to know for the second half of the week. Coming up on Weather Underground, our live coverage from go rain once again for you. It's 50 degrees, so not the, you know, 40s and rain, but still a cool rainy day. Reno, you've got light snow falling, but parts of the Sierra Nevada range getting in on big snow once again. So really central and northern part right now. We've also got some ongoing snow across parts of Oregon and into sections of Idaho. But the blizzard warnings, they're in effect through tomorrow along the Sierra Nevada range, even in, into sections of the Reno metro area. And then we've got winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories, peppering parts of the West, including sections of Arizona, Southern California, getting into Utah as well. Cedar City up towards the Salt Lake City area. Biggest winners in terms of snowfall yet to come will be along the California mountains. So two to three additional feet yet to come, but plenty of spots would be in that uh, foot and a half to two feet range, even the foot to a foot and a half there across sections of Southern Utah and Northern parts of the state of Arizona. So a lot more to come still for many of these areas. This has been good news, though. The snowpack really, really crucial and critical to our water supply. Now, we take a closer look. A place like Mammoth Lakes looking at four to five feet of additional snow, uh, especially as we get up towards uh, the areas between Pollock Pines and Mammoth Lakes. Two to three feet where you see some of those lighter shades of pink. 
lot more snow still on the way. Time and time again, we are disappointed. I guess really like any major city we can say that about, right? We all love our sports teams and they just let us down. But uh, snow has not really been much, uh, much there for us. Chicago, New York City, we continue to get excited. And then at the last second, it's like, uh, I'm going to be farther off to the north and west. Now, we do have a quick shot of northern rain and snow tomorrow. This is a quick little storm system that's riding the jet stream out ahead of Winter Storm Quest. Of course, that's going to be more of the heavy hitter, but this will bring us some snow to parts of Minnesota, parts of the Dakotas, parts of Wisconsin, and then we've got a little rain-snow mix farther to the south where you see the area shaded in purple. That'll continue to ride eastward Thursday. It's way up there in New York and New England that gets snow. Any other areas generally looking at the wintry weather uh, mixed, whether it's the freezing rain or the rain snow mix. That would be interior sections of, say, Maine, parts of Vermont and New Hampshire as well. So you got to live far north to see the snow out of this one. It has prompted a few winter storm warnings, generally into parts of North Dakota between Bismarck and Fargo, winter weather advisories elsewhere. So again, you can see it's not going to be a super impactful event, given that for many of these areas, it's advisory criteria. But in addition to the uh, additional round of snow, gust of 45 miles an hour and hazardous travel. In the meantime, let's take a look at Detroit winter for us in the Chicago area. We've got a few inches here, a few inches there, but nothing really significant, nothing we'd really want to see on a quest for good snow. Will this winter storm deliver? Uh, that's ultimately the question, right? And uh, this one does look like it's got the possibility of bringing us some significant snow. Although, I know we just heard from Mike Seidel that some of the forecast models, we, we still have a little bit to go, so we can see things change. But when we look at the seasonal snowfall, we are we should be almost at our seasonal average. And when we look at the Chicago area thus far, biggest snowfall totals of 2022 into 2023. Three and a half inches was as good as it got. Could Quest be the, the big one for us? Absolutely. We'll continue to watch. Then in addition to severe weather, we've got the risk of flash flooding as well. So plenty to watch for out of this. Let's get you into the timing. What time frame do you need to watch where you live? Well, obviously Thursday, a big day across parts of Texas and Arkansas, Oklahoma and Louisiana, into the states of Mississippi, even Alabama. You can see very, very active as we begin to move, especially into the afternoon and evening hours. So that I think is going to be our most dangerous day with the highest population affected or at least the highest coverage of the worst of the storm. Storms. Then we've got we add in the heavy rainfall that could lead to some flash flooding. So prepare your safe room. Start thinking about that now. Again, I know we've talked about this a lot. Safe room may already be ready, but make sure there's snacks. Make sure there's things that the kids like, whether it's that favorite toy that they would need to have. Make sure you know where that is the day of, because again, I know the warnings come in and then you're searching for Mr. Bear. Make sure you've got uh, leashes for the pets, the cat carrier around so everybody in the family can be in that safe spot. Communicate with your family about the severe weather threat and the time frame that you need to be ready for. Obviously get those mobile alerts, have that weather radio uh, ready to go. Lots of options for getting the warnings and the alerts. Just make sure you're getting them. That's critical. Then we go into Thursday night and we'll continue to watch portions of Kentucky and Tennessee for some heavy rain that continues into Friday morning. You can see a Friday early start to the day in Atlanta. Mike, things will be really soggy. All right, Alex.